Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do a creator request which is where a band gets in contact with me and says hey would you mind checking out our stuff. Today we're going to be looking at a group called Legs on Wheels who were actually recommended to the channel uh, by one of the members of Rogue Frequency who we've checked out in creator requests earlier. Uh, that was back in 2022. Um, they say that they are a five-piece alternative rock band from Manchester, and their sound incorporates a few different styles, and they're not really quite sure what to call it all, but they hope that I enjoy it. We're going to take a look at their latest single, which is called The Big Squeeze. We got eight minutes of music ahead of us. Let's dive in, see what Legs on Wheels is bringing to the table today. Right about 60% volume here. Bit of a quiet opening. There we are, we're in seven. Yeah. Alternating four and three, very fun idea. Harmonically a bit all over the place. We just had a really big chord shift. Beautiful bass tone. <laughs> what? Dude, that is fun, and I can't tell if they're messing with... It feels like we speed up and slow down. Different vocal production here. Dude, rather consistent rhythm, and then the speed up. I don't know. It might be just a hair shorter than 7-4, which would be 13-8. Like it's just, it's so, it bends, it bends the time. That's just such an infectious little rhythm they have here. <laughs> Not even trying to make it look more complex. Like, this just two notes. I'm using two fingers. I love it. Nice little variation on that. Why should I waste my breath on you? 
yield the berry from the mouth of my can. Suffocate the future I've been taking to bed. Oh, jeez. Some heavy contrast, bit of a palate cleanser. I'd wager we're going to get back to some of the stuff we were just in as we get closer to the end of the track. Kind of jazzy. Specifically that chord right there, the one that points us to our final tone. Yeah, that one. There's some really fun tension there. Still have on the, uh, was that ride symbol there? That really funky rhythm. I don't know what that percussion is. Really nice addition. Like a really tiny, 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 tiny symbol. Oh, okay. No, it's a glockenspiel. Duh. <laughs> yeah, a chilled out version. There's not actually a lot of dissimilarities between this and what we heard previously. It's just, they removed all the energy out of it. But the rhythm, the melody, that's all very similar. So we've got a 3-3-3-4, uh, three, 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 alternating 7-4 and 6-4 here. So it is, yeah, okay. It's similar, but not identical. All right, drummer. See? I told you we'd come back to this. Yeah. That just that speed up at the end, that got me last time too. Totally aside from the music, I do like the snare drum with the light. It's a cool little aesthetic. All right, yeah. All right, <laughs> what? What do we make of this? Um. There's a lot of inspirations here. I know that they called themselves alternative rock, but that they had so many sounds that they didn't really know what to call it. It's kind of a blanket term, but I'm just going to throw out progressive rock. It's, uh, it encapsulates a lot of progressive rock, and I think that's the interesting part right here. I don't know who their influences are, but I do hear King Crimson. I hear Genesis. I hear Pink Floyd, but it's not just the older stuff. I also hear Cardiacs, which is still a bit older but newer. I also hear Haken in here, which, of course, Haken, as I've talked about, has a lot of influences of uh, some of these older groups as well. They just have a very modern take on it. And that's what this reminds me of. Even some of the wilder rhythmic ideas, that certainly stems on uh, leaning towards some of the newer types of progressive styles. As I've mentioned a lot, 
uh, old classic progressive rock, stuff that stems out of the, the 60s, 70s, uh, and a lot of the music that was derived and inspired by some of this stuff is very experimental in sound. We get a lot of really cool atmospheric stuff. We get uh, combinations of timbres. We explore some really cool harmonic devices. Modern day progressive music tends to be a bit more focused on rhythm. This is where we get, especially in the progressive metal realm, um, you know, we get math core, we get math rock, uh, we get gent. It's about getting rhythmically playful uh, and experimenting with that. This kind of pulls both of those worlds together. We get a lot of the sounds and textures and timbres um, and even some of the general atmospheric sounds from those 70s groups. But there's also this really strong playfulness of rhythm that feels very modern baked into a lot of this. Again, I don't know where their inspirations are. I don't know what kind of music they listened to that would have crafted whatever went into this but i find it really awesome that i can find bits and pieces from all over the progressive rock spectrum like 50 years of music packed together into this um and so yeah i mean legs on wheels if you're watching this i would probably ditch the alternative rock title and probably stick with progressive rock because that is 100 percent where i would place you um alternative rock to me is a bit more uh mainstream palatable uh <laughs> that probably feels like a uh a negative aspect but in the world of progressive rock <laughs> palatable might not always be what you're aiming for um, and I think honestly, you know, Cardiacs is a really, I, I know I'd like glossed by them earlier, but Cardiacs is one, is, I hear a lot of that in here. And I think a lot of it's the sheer playfulness of it. And I suppose that's a good place to start the playfulness of this track. Time is a suggestion. It's really difficult to write music that feels organic and yet also temporal loose. Temporally loose? There we go. That's probably the word I want. Particularly the first time that the uh, the vocals come in with that really fast delivery uh, when he's wearing the house hat. That section, every time we get to it, I have real difficulty counting it out. The band speeds up and slows down gradually. It's not piecemeal where the first bar is X BPM and the second bar is Y BPM or something like that. It feels like a gradual accelerando and uh, you know diminishing, raining that BPM back in. I, I say that because for the moment I just forgot the, the opposite of an accelerando. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just this gradual speeding up and gradual slowing down in a way that doesn't make it easy to count because I want to count at the same speed they're playing and it happens so quick and we move off of it back to a very standard seven, four idea that you really get one shot at it. <laughs> And then you have to wait a little bit to get that second shot. And the way that I feel it is it's either 7-4 or I also kind of feel like it moves just a hair bit quicker out of the, the phrase than I counting, which would probably be 13-8. I wouldn't put either by. 13-8 is very close to 7-4 anyway. 7-4, of course, if we convert it to eighth notes instead of quarter notes getting the beat, it's 14-8. So we're really only looking at half of a beat difference there. And at that speed, half of a beat goes by quick. So uh, I'm kind of curious if I can get my hands on the sheet music, what's going on there. Um, and even more peculiarly, how it's written. Maybe that's just something you suss out. It just says, you know, speed up and slow down. There's not actual any, uh, any technical element there, uh, <laughs> which is probably how I would go about composing it and then really rely on the, the conductor to guide everyone. Not that y'all have a conductor, but, you know, I, I come from a very traditional mindset of, of how to approach music. So that tends to be my, my first place of um, 
trying to figure things out. But yeah, that 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 whole section's bonkers. Um, towards the end of the track, we have uh, several bars of three followed by a bar of four to give us that extension to the idea. So instead of a, a twelve beat phrase, it ends up being a thirteen beat phrase. I said several. It's three beats of four. Th oh, sorry, three beats of three and a beat and a. Blah. My brain is doing a lot of processing right now while also trying to write the script in real time. <laughs> it is three bars of three followed by a bar of four, which gives us that 13 beat phrase. I pointed that out towards the end. Now, interestingly, outside of these two places, most of the song just resides in these groups of seven. So it's not that the meter itself gets playful throughout the track we then have to look at the tempo which i've already mentioned that core section just sort of speeds up and slows down through it in, in, a, in a sort of vague idea of time but even towards the end of the verse i pointed it out the first time and when we came back to it there in that final section there is this part of the end of the phrase where we have just the guitar and drums and bass you know but the guitar is the lead we have this series of eighth notes. Just, I didn't really catch much of a, a pattern to the notes themselves. It was just like, ba 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 Just very, um, a rigid series of these eighth notes. And then at the very end, we have a slight tempo increase and a shift to, I think, 16th notes. So we have like, ba 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 da 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 and then we loop back to the beginning of the phrase. It is a fun little moment. <laughs> It is a an interesting, ear-catching punctuation to the phrase, a way to wrap up what we're doing now and go back to the beginning to start the loop again. But it does it in a way that there's just no way to miss it. It is ear-catching. It immediately says, hey, look at me. Things just got weird for a second. Also, we're back to normal. And it's 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 just one of the ways that this group is just temporally playful. Time is a suggestion here. Despite the fact that we have a rather static time signature throughout, the song consistently feels like it is jumping into all sorts of meters and tempos. It is never really stationary in its time feel and i'm i'm just flabbergasted by that because like you know just on the one hand the composing of it is wild how do you come to these conclusions it it, it all feels um totally out of left field to me at least coming from my own perspective of how i write i don't know that i would ever naturally come to these ideas i would have to specifically say hey i want to make some you know obtuse I rhythmic ideas and go out of my way oh i've written this which is nice let me put an extension on now let me remove a piece of it let me just speed this thing up and i wouldn't really have any rhyme or reason it would just be these odd moments and i'm not sure it would all come together the way it does here this feels like it's very natural for the composer maybe it's the whole group i don't know who writes the music to do this which is also very cardiac. It's the same thing with uh, is his name Tim Smith. There's just something about the way that he writes that is probably just him. Nobody else could replicate it because it's so different. And that's what I get here. No, nothing that I heard is anything I would naturally come to, which really intrigues me it makes me want to pick their brain about how they go about this stuff but i'm also a little afraid that my the end result is that's just how i write music because sometimes that's how i write my music you know i get i get comments on my music sometimes like, oh this is gorgeous it's beautiful stuff and i'm like yeah thanks but like there's a part of me that's like it's just what i do though it feels so normal to me you give me an instrument and this is what i'm writing um and I kind of feel like that might be what happens in some of these situations. Some of it might be completely intentional. They went out of their way to craft it. But other parts, it's just going to be a natural extension. This is just how they write what they write. Um, which isn't very informative for me who might want to try to emulate it. But it might be the truth of it. Um, outside of time, what else do we got to talk about here? There's a lot of vocal stuff going on. Some of it's production wise, like when we get to the chorus, there's a widening out. And of course, there's the double tracking that we get on it that we don't have everywhere. 
Um, well, that's probably probably not true. There's probably double tracking in most places, but it's an audible double tracking where there's either a separation in the staging or there is uh, just a slight enough difference between the takes that it allows them to sound different. It just makes it obvious that there's a second track there. And uh, But it, beyond just the production stuff, there's also the delivery. Whether it's a bit wider and more projected with really strong airflow, or if it's the quieter stuff that we got in the bridge, sort of whispery, airy, ethereal. Uh, even just the quick talking stuff that's still projected but is less wide. It's more piercing and cutting, a, a directed style of vocal delivery. The vocalist is just... There's a bunch of styles here, and I'm curious to listen to more of the, the stuff from this group to see if the vocalist has any other tricks up their sleeve. Um, oh, I completely forgot. <laughs> I went so on about the composition side. What I meant to say is that um, the composition here is intricate, sure, but there's also the performance of it, which I guess kind of goes with where we were going. I was talking about the vocals. I was going to go into the instruments. Um Counting these things out, playing these lines, the, the whole temporal element of it is difficult. And they play it from memory too, which means a lot of it gets put into muscle memory, which is really helpful for playing up to stuff like this. Um, but then there's also the lining up with everybody, keeping in, in time with everyone, and the fact that there's also some really difficult lines in here, forgetting the time entirely, just the technical element in the drum work of playing these passages, um, playing these riffs and licks on the guitar. Uh, some of the lead melodies on the guitar line are fast and technical and require precision. And yeah, it is just not easy music to write, but it's also not easy music to play. And that is, wow. Uh, so, I have their Bandcamp pulled up, because I was going to look at some stuff, I was going to find lyrics later, um, and all that stuff, and it was already in the description box, so I was like, I'll just pull it up right now and check it out later, but something caught my eye. The drummer also plays percussion, also plays the triangle, and also plays the beer keg. And I love how that's added in. I mean, I'm sure that's one of the instruments on the album somewhere. Um, but one, I just love that it's there. Like the drummer hit a beard keg and said, I like that tone. Let's put it in a song. But also that they added it to the list of instruments. <laughs> you could easily just not add it. Just, you know, yeah, we never played a beer keg, but they just, it's so good. That might be the other thing, right? Aside from all the technical elements, well, let's bring up another band again, Haken. Haken is super technical on the harmonic side, the rhythmic side, the performance side. Again, I see a lot of parallels between Legs on Wheels and Haken. Haken is very serious, though. There are a couple of songs I've heard from them where I'm like, oh, they're getting a little playful with their writing, but... For the most part, it is all super clean, super technical, very proficient, and there's a seriousness and gravitas to all of it. Legs on Wheels is kind of the opposite of that, in which case it's all very technical and serious on the music side of things, but when it comes to the performance and the way that the song feels, and even the way that they present themselves in the music videos, well, the music, I've only seen one, the music video, it's very fun. There is a seriousness to the craft, but not a seriousness to the performance, which again kind of harkens a little bit to Cardiacs. Uh, I think I've only seen one music video from them, which is Tarred and Feathered, but it's a very fun music video, which matches the energy of their music. And I hear something very similar here. This is a very fun song. Ideas come out of nowhere. They are sort of absurd in some ways. Uh, and I got a couple of laughs in this track. And Legs on Wheels, if you're watching, I'm not laughing at the composition or the performance or anything negative. It's just that musically, I don't know if you've done this intentionally, but you've set up a punchline and then delivered something totally different in a way that feels like absurdist comedy. 
and I love that in music. I love when music makes me laugh in a positive way. I'm not laughing at it. I'm laughing with it, it feels like. And I hope that makes sense to you. And I, I kind of hope it was intentional. But like I said, if not, then I hope it makes sense at the very least. And it's because of this fun energy. The song doesn't take itself seriously despite the serious chops that went into creating it. Um, and there's just so many absurd moments in here that act as transitions between ideas that just feel way over the top and, and unexpected in a way that sweeps me off my feet. And I'm like, wow, I really did not see that coming. And it all just fits, much like Cardiacs. The energy of the visuals, the energy of the music, the, the composition, the decisions that go into it, it all puts forth something that almost feels laid back and low stakes despite the heavy, intense complexity on stage. And it's one of the things that I find endearing about Cardiacs. And it's one of the things I find endearing about this song. Um, I think the last thing, do I have another thing? I thought I did. I'm going to find some lyrics and I'm going to think about it because I'm pretty sure I had another one, but I don't want to waste y'all's time just sitting here going, oh, do I have something to say? Let me figure it out. Um, so I'm going to pause the video real quick and do a little bit of research and see what I can come up with. All right, the last note I wanted to make was on the bridge. I felt this was really necessary as there's a lot of chaotic energy in the track and bringing the song down to a bit of a lull and allowing the energy to dissipate and allow the listener to take a moment to realize what they had listened to was really necessary. And I think that it was well done here in the transition into the bridge as well as what the bridge accomplished. It didn't give up any of the odd choices it's not like it went towards a totally like mainstream sound it kept with the characteristics of the song up until then but just brought the energy back a little bit i do wish the transition back into that final chorus was a little bit smoother but that's just a personal thing especially with how smooth we went into the bridge um but, you know, harsh transitions are something that is enjoyed around here. And I always get comments about, Brian, you and your need for smooth transitions just get a wider musical palette or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I know I'm, I'm a bit of an oddball with that. There's a few of y'all who agree with me. And I do see the artistic purpose of harsh transitions at times. Um, but this one didn't really work for me in a way. And maybe that's just me being me with my own musical biases. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I enjoyed that lull, and I thought it was a really... It was good timing, too, because there was like five minutes of chaos before that. And I really needed that moment to try to get my head straight on <laughs> what I had just heard. Um, so, yeah, that was great. Lyrically, this seems to be a type of... Uh, anti-rich possibly anti-capitalist song it talks about running out of places to live it talks about uh, the rich taking everything they can from us even though we have very little left to give um, and it particularly it talks about rent and housing quite often um, so it could particularly be about that specifically but i think the idea of the big squeeze is squeezing every drop of money out of us at the bottom. There are some really interesting metaphors <laughs> leading up to this, which kind of fits in with that funny, semi-absurd, not funny, fun, semi-absurd energy that the music has. The lyrics go along with that quite a bit, but it's almost as if the mask comes off at the end and the vocalist decides to speak a little bit more plainer as if not to want to be misconstrued. It says, you collect my money from the gilded curtain, you rip out my garden with the stroke of a pen, your invisible destructor, tyrannical, overpaid invoker of archaic little relics of time, why should I waste my breath on you? You steal the berry from the mouth of my kin, suffocate the future I've been taking to bed, sign away the promise of a prophet for a profit, get you a double garage in a Tucson village of white. 
Why should I waste my breath on you? You reach, you leech, you bleed me dry. Try, try as I might, the fight is fixed. A lolly in a world of licks. What I find most fascinating about this isn't necessarily what the topic is, although I will always be here for <laughs> this topic. Um, it's also how it's stated. There is a real strong sense of flow of syllabic movement between ideas that just makes all of this roll off of the tongue really easily. Even on some of the earlier um, metaphorical lines that I don't quite understand what's happening, they sound really good in the song. They feel really good to say out loud. All of these syllables tend to move in a way uh, that's very palatable. It reminds me a lot of wordsmiths and rappers who it's not so much just about the message, but how the message is delivered. And I find that that is something I'm hearing and feeling within these lyrics. I really like this lyricist and the, the control that they have over language. It just comes off so effortless. I think that's the thing about all of this. It is complex. It is dense. It is chaotic and so also fun, but also very serious. And above all else, seemingly effortless as if they just ooze this. And I know there's more to it. I don't want to diminish the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into creating something like this. But it also just feels like it works. Haken to me feels very produced. Everything feels particularly placed for maximum effort rhythmically or harmonically or lyrically. It's something that is very much constructed from a theoretical point of view. And I really appreciate Haken for that. They present and bring something to the, to the progressive rock area that not a lot of musicians do. There really isn't anyone as clinical as Haken out there right now. This just feels natural, though. And whether it is completely natural, and this is just how Legs on Reels writes, or whether it is very articulately and, and meticulously written, the end result is that it feels effortless. And that is very difficult to do for something as complex as this. It is something that not a lot of artists get right. And they do. Those are my thoughts. Legs on Wheels, The Big Squeeze. Let me know what you thought of this track, if there was anything that stood out to you, anything that you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on. Maybe you just have your own individual thoughts, perspectives, and opinions about this track devoid completely of any topics I brought up. Go ahead and place all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. I'm also going to put links for legs on wheels in the description as well if you want to go find their music or their social media or whatever i can find uh, you guys can go and check out whatever you want from <laughs> i'm just trying to reduce the friction so you don't have to go out there and find it yourself above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell if you end up on any of their pages like subscribe thumbs up hearts stars whatever they utilize show them some love from critical reactions um, tomorrow I'll be back 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of long band names. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.